if you like to fly at night in the high country, where would you go to hang out? It was a widening project from basically where NC-105 bypass is in the Boone city limits through to Linville. And it was scheduled to be a four-lane divided highway, the whole length. If you've ever been on NC-105, it's the downside of the mountain and the river, and it's the upside of the mountain. So how are you going to four-lane that? Well, you're going to blast a whole bunch. Dynamite, earth-moving, I realized pretty immediately that one of the big concerns was going to be for bats. They're very cute and charming little creatures, even though some people would probably disagree with that. Bats are incredibly beneficial um, to people, and they're really important for our environment and they're the main predator of night flying insects. So they eat things that like to bother us, like mosquitoes, also forest pests, agricultural pests. Um, so it's pretty important to have them around. And people shouldn't be afraid of them. <laughs> Stop being afraid. The Virginia bigger bat was federally listed as endangered in 1979, and it was primarily listed because of habitat destruction and disturbance to their habitat. So Virginia bigger bats are cave obligates, and that means they only roost in caves. So they hibernate in caves in the winter, and they also spend their summers in caves. And the females actually form maternity colonies, and those are sites where all the girls get together, and they give birth, and they raise their pups in these maternity caves. The Virginia bigger bat population is pretty small to start with. They live in a pretty limited area, so it's just Virginia and West Virginia, Kentucky, North Carolina, and a little bit in eastern Tennessee. And on top of that, Virginia bigger bats seem to be more sensitive to disturbance by humans than other bats. So they will pretty readily abandon a site and even abandon their pups if they're disturbed by people. We knew that we had a hibernaculum in the Grandfather Mountain area, but didn't know much about where they were going in the summer. We knew that the maternity site was probably close by. The bats typically don't fly more than 20 miles to get to their summering sites. If a maternity roost cave was really close to the corridor, it could probably be damaged by the excavation for the road. But even if it was further away, it could still be, you know, bats could be disturbed in their summer habitat. And that was my biggest concern was, since we didn't know where a maternity roost was or if there was one in the near vicinity, how were they gonna proceed with the project without really doing something bad if we didn't know where bats were? Because previously, the Wildlife Resources Commission had had a biologist who tried to track the Virginia bigger bats that were in the hibernaculum on Grandfather to where they were going, and they kept losing them, and they never could figure out where they went. I'm Sue McBean, the superintendent of Grandfather Mountain State Park. The Department of Transportation, North Carolina DOT, was following their mandate by knowing that there was a federally threatened species living on the mountain. They're mandated to ensure that their road project is not going to threaten that population any further. And just realizing that that may have an effect on um, a population of species that goes to a summer roosting area and, and we don't know where that is. So the idea was to try to find it so that they would tailor their project in such a way or do the dynamiting in such a way that they wouldn't impact the roost or that it would be far enough away that it wouldn't be impacted anyway. The other question that needed to be answered too though is, so if you're going from a two-lane road to a four-lane road, we know that these bats are using the area for forage. And so the other part of the project, besides finding the maternity roost, was radio tagging bats and so that we could look at their forage habits. 
in the daytime the bats are roosting so that's when we search for their roosts. We trim a little bit of hair off on their back and then we take a little bit of surgical glue on a transmitter and stick it on their back. That'll stay on there for at least a week, hopefully longer, and then eventually it'll just fall off. Joey, he is a radio telemetry expert. Like he just knows and feels things that none of us can do with, with telemetry. He had a really big task in front of him. He put a lot of radio transmitters on Virginia Beard bats that were hibernating up on Grandfather and then set out to track them and figure out where they were actually roosting in the summertime. That area is just so rugged, like Grandfather Mountain is crazy rugged. So much, you know, topography and it's really steep in places. And so you put these tiny transmitters on these bats and hope to follow them over that terrain. And it is hard, it's really hard to do. <laughs> it's basically a lot of driving around and listening for a signal keep driving even where you think you're not gonna hear it, eventually you'll hear <laughs> He was a uh, covering area that I'm sure people didn't think he would probably need to cover because they probably didn't expect bats to go where they ended up going. I just heard a signal as I was turning this hairpin curve and then I just backed the truck up and pulled in there. And he figured out kind of where to hone in on and he saw this big rock outcrop and kind of went for it because that's where his signal was coming from. And then he saw that there was kind of a, a low crawl that led into this rock outcrop. From the face of it, it really doesn't look like a cave. It's, it's just kind of like a low kind of slit in the face of the rock. And he got down on his belly and crawled under. And then he stood up and he saw hundreds of Virginia Bigard bats. And I asked him, Joey, what did that feel like? What were you thinking? And he said, I was thinking that I needed to get back to my crew because I told them I would meet them at a certain time and I was going to be late. And I'm like. It was nice to see all the bats in there because I, I didn't think we would find them. Pretty remarkable for Joey Weber to find those bats the way he did. We were all just completely blown away that it happened as quickly as it did. Yay! Now we know. And if you know, you can manage around it something that you can work with. Although, when we figured out where the maternity roost was, it happened to be on a piece of property that was up for development. Somebody could have built a house there. So the maternity roosts were found on the what's called the backside of Beach Mountain. It's along Beach Creek. It's a fairly rugged area with a beautiful trout stream running through there, as well as a bunch of rock outcroppings and small caves for these bats to roost in. There is a possibility that houses could have been built on each of those lots, uh, therefore disturbing the habitat and the roost sites for these bats. And so they called Blue Ridge Conservancy to see if we had any interest in trying to acquire and protect land that the roost sits on, as well as other land in the immediate area. Part of Blue Ridge Conservancy's mission is to protect rare and threatened ecologically sensitive areas. And so when the U.S. Fish and Wildlife called and presented this project to save the Bat Cave, we were really excited about the opportunity to partner with them. Initially, I had called eight landowners um, to see if there was interest in selling their land. And uh, to my surprise, which never happens, actually all eight landowners were interested in at least entertaining the idea of selling the land. Once we found that out and realized that we could really protect the core area um, of the roost, not just the roost itself, but the habitat around it, and the next challenge was to try to raise $1 million to secure all of the lands. Thanks to a very generous philanthropist and the state agencies that were involved, Blue Ridge Conservancy was able to purchase the land surrounding the bat cave and protect the Virginia big-eared bat habitat forever. From the Morton family and its historic preservation of the mountain, state parks, um, federal agencies, state agencies, private landowners, um, and, and um, philanthropists. And through those partnerships, we were able to secure all of the funding purchase the properties. 
an old mystery was solved, and in solving that old mystery, we've got a great resource protection. You know, we got some great information about a very rare species that we wouldn't have gotten had it not been for a project, you know, a highway project proposed. These bats, again, are just, are really sensitive, <laughs> and they're, and human disturbance has put them where they are on the endangered species list, and we hope to get them off that list one day, to have populations that are large enough and strong enough that they're not on there, you know, that's the ultimate goal, so land conservation is a huge part of that. This project to protect the bats is just one great example of why this region is so special and so worth protecting. You don't have to be a billionaire to care about conservation and give back. By supporting your local land trust like Blue Ridge Conservancy, you're achieving amazing things for the land, the water, the wildlife, and the people of this area. Please consider joining Blue Ridge Conservancy and supporting our mission to save the places you love. Every now and then you get people who really buy into the old wives' tale that bats get in your hair. And I hear that so often actually. Oh, you know, don't bats get in your hair? And I tell them um, that I spend so much of my time in the summer, every night in the summer, or almost every night, going out and setting up these very, very large nets to catch bats. We spend hours doing it, it's really tedious. And if all I had to do was tease up my hair really, really large, and stand outside to catch bats. I would do that in a heartbeat. It doesn't work. I've never had a bat in my hair. I'm around them all the time. So that is a false myth. They do not get in your hair.